Hi everyone. So welcome to this session once again. So today our session is on the discussion of the dynamic moving load or the pulsating moving load on any structure like bridge or maybe any kind of deck. So most of you might be aware that instead we do have the option to generate the static moving load and uh, we can thereby perform the analysis instead. But how about the dynamic moving load? So it might happen like, for example, a vehicle is speeding over a bridge and its wheel position is not constant because it's moving and it is imparting the constant pulsating vibration on the bridge. Now this pulsating force in general happens could be due to slight unbalanced rotational force in the wheel or maybe due to some undulation in the road so in general we have noticed that higher the speed uh, the more the vibration can be perceived so the point of application of the dynamic force changes its position as the moving uh, load or the vehicle moves forward Now our, now our interest or the interest of an engineer is to capture the dynamic response of the structure due to this uh, pulsating moving load on the bridge. Now basically this pulsating, why I'm using this because it's uh, imparting some uh, vibration or some dynamic force after some regular interval. It could be harmonic or it could be non-harmonic, but if assuming that the vehicle is moving at some particular constant speed and due to some unbalanced uh, mass in the in the wheel or maybe due to some issue with the wheel position or the axle is not exactly at the center, uh, when it moves at a high velocity, it is uh, pulsating some forces, dynamic forces at some regular interval. Uh, we can also correlate it to some harmonic dynamic forces. So one may think that why can't we create the separate models for each individual position of the wheel and then do the dynamic analysis. But this won't be a correct approach as the dynamic response at every position of the pulsating wheel which is rolling on the bridge generates a different pattern of vibration. And they, I mean this, the vibration or this uh, mode shapes and all, they would travel across the bridge and uh, they would superimpose with the next set of modes that are generated by the wheel, which are marching ahead at the different consequent position. So we need to consider the interaction of all these individual responses uh, which are coming out of the pulsating force imparted at different location across the bridge. So this is not possible if we create a separate individual model representing the different wheel location and do the time stay analysis separately. So we can't superimpose the effect of individual pulsating load emitting at different wheel position. So that's the reason we need to come across with some idea by which we can capture the dynamic response of this pulsating force of the wheel that is located at various location and we can find the resultant dynamic response. So hence we need to create a procedure um, by which we can define the pulsating moving load position at various location on the bridge uh, in a very same STAD model and then perform the vibration analysis. So let's uh, try in a live model. So we will just uh, demonstrate on a STAD model on which we have created two parallel lines uh, representing the track and on which we will try to just apply the dynamic moving load. Uh, this is to be done instead by the dynamic analysis features. Uh, one of them is the time history analysis. So you can see on the screen like uh, this generally happens when a body is rolling across the bridge or a flyover or a deck at a considerable speed. It may be a vehicle or maybe high-speed train or any kind of rolling body. So 
So here what happens if there is a very slight difference in the distribution of the mass in the wheel and due to this unbalanced mass this wheel would create a pulsating forces all across the bridge while it is marching ahead and you can see the trajectory of this it is like the pattern at which the unbalanced force is going to impact the bridge at some certain intervals so basically if we are considering some idle situation it is a very uniform harmonic forcing function just like a sine wave or a cos wave so let's uh, open the time state definition where we are going to define the relevant information so in the time state definition you could see there are different options to define the functions that is the forcing function one is by defining the time versus force pairs and then we have a separate option to define the harmonic function and then you can import some external time versus force pairs from some external file or source now here we are going to use the time versus force pairs that is the first option although you can use the second one that is the harmonic function if it is a a very uniform harmonic motion or the pulsating motion but assuming that you might not have the luxury of having that uniform constant harmonic motion throughout the entire period when the vehicle moves on the bridge but yes it's up to you in case if it is not that idle situation uh, then you might have a variation in this cyclic behavior of the pulsating force so you may want to extract the time versus force pairs from different source maybe you have created in a spreadsheet copy that and paste it over here i have taken some of scenario where where the pulsating force is imparting on the bridge at some regular interval so it's a uniform harmonic motion okay so you can see those waves this waves representing a different time when the pulses being delivered on the bridge so this is the first step now the second step would be to define the arrival time now that is the key of this pulsating moving load definition instead now this arrival time is very important here and that would guide you like at what point of time the right pulsating force is hitting the right position of the bridge so basically what exactly is the arrival time the arrival time is nothing but it is a data where we are defining by different sequence of the time interval so this is basically a time at which the wheel would arrive at the desired location so you can calculate this very easily by uh, knowing the interval at which the wheels are moving at different position and the speed of the vehicle so basically we can calculate the time from distance and the speed the same formula can be applied here so you can see here this is the different location of the vehicle wheel and this would be the respective arrival time at which the wheel are arriving on those positions now your arrival time and the basic time state definition are over now you have to create the dynamic load case like this where just like any other dynamic load case procedure you need to define the mass modeling that is the inertial information of the bridge I have just taken the cell fate here. If there are any other uh, components you want to consider, you can add it over here. Now this is just the mass modeling and then you have to define the time is to load at the right location. So here you can see, I am going to apply the time is to load on the right location. Now here, if I click on this uh, one of the 
loading you can see this window i have already defined those time history loading so i would i would just want to show how i have uh, linked all those arrival time in the respective corresponding time history loads so here you need to use the time load only and then obviously we have uh, consider the uh, time history pair as a time versus force so the defined type would be force and then the most important part is the arrival time that is the list of those uh, different time intervals that you have already defined in the arrival time definitions so basically this is the different interval of time at which your sinusoidal force um, the magnitude of the sinusoidal force i mean would be applied at specific location so we have already calculated this arrival time by knowing the distance of different uh, span of the bridge uh, where this uh, we are assuming the wheel load would be applied that is the pulsating load would be applied and knowing the velocity of the vehicle we have already calculated the arrival time now we need to call that arrival time and link that to that respective position. Now this is, uh, you can see the blue color highlights that this is the location where my time load is being applied. Now you can see this time we have taken the arrival time of 0 0.813971. Now if we just see that, this value uh, is the same that we have already defined in the arrival time definition and here you can see this is the one so you can see that the corresponding time loads are applied to the relevant uh, position along with the right arrival time so our time load application is over now we can perform the analysis now the analysis is pretty fast because we have taken a very simple model now here you can see that we have taken some finite interval of the distance uh, within the length of the bridge uh, you could make much more closer um, higher would be the proximity of those uh, application of those time load the more precise would be your result but just, just like any finite element approach so i have taken the distance or the interval length not that small not that large also quite decent so after the analysis is over we can see the different responses now let's see the displacement response uh, this would just represent the displacement due to this dynamic loading at various time steps means as we are just uh, starting our time from on the zero uh, we have uh, different arrival time and we can see that as the vehicle is moving forward we can see the vibration accordingly now here uh, please don't get uh, confused like why we can't see the location of the vehicle just like in the regular moving load because we are not using the regular moving load features so here we can't see the location of the vehicle we can just idealize the location of the vehicle by just uh, seeing the the duration that we have elapsed that is uh, from these time steps then we can identify that okay at this time the my vehicle position should be at this location like this uh, assumption you can just under you can you can just estimate the position of the vehicle now this is the way we can perfectly capture the dynamic response of a moving load uh, which is uh, generating some pulsating forces at some regular interval on the bridge and this is the response only for the dynamic case and if you want to know the resultant response that is uh, because it's a dynamic response so we have to algebraically sum with the static response so what you can do is you can separately create a different model 
with the static moving load right and then you can take the result from two different files and then you can add to find the final response of the displacement and other dynamic responses so hope that helps you in understanding the scenario in simulating the dynamic response of a structure on which the pulsating moving load is moving forward